Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us for this month's MSP Ignite Resource Network webinar. As always, we're excited to be bringing the Resource Network webinar series to our members, as well as the invited guests. All of the presenters speaking in the series throughout the year have made a commitment to provide our membership with actionable insight into areas that can help them grow or otherwise impact their bottom line in a positive way. Before I jump into the speaker's introductions, let me just go over the logistics and ground rules to help everybody. Uh, first off, we are recording the session and we will send you an email after this webinar with a copy of the slides and a link to the MSP Ignite YouTube channel where you'll be able to watch the presentation again or share it with anyone else in your company. Um, everyone will remain muted during the call, um, during the presentation. However, please use the Q&A button to ask questions along the way. Um, that's not the chat button, it's the Q&A button. And I point that out because it's just a lot easier for me to follow your questions and who we've answered and who we haven't, if we can get to them along the way, than when it's in chat. But if you have anything to chat us, by all means, do that as well. Our keynote speaker today is Alan Walters. Um, Alan's been with us before, fascinating presentations all the time. Um, some things you may not know about Alan. Um, as a sophomore in college, Alan actually co-founded an IT company in Tennessee uh, with four of his friends. They started the company with a grand total of $500 in cash. That was borrowed money, by the way. Uh, three years later, he helped co-found an internet service provider back when dial-up service was the only game in town. Both companies were eventually sold, and he joined the larger VAR as senior vice president of marketing, helping them grow from $1 million in annual revenue to over $13.5 million during his time with them. He now works at W. O'Donnell Consulting, a New York-based MSP and IT consulting firm, as director of SEO and marketing, helping the company grow by utilizing SEO and pay-per-click advertising, as well as other inbound marketing. Alan is an experienced digital marketer and growth hacker and has helped numerous companies grow using different online marketing strategies. He's worked with many of our members, as a matter of fact. Um, he's also a proud Kansas City Barbecue Society certified barbecue judge and soon to become a master judge, judging barbecue contests all over the country. Before we turn everything over to Alan, though, I'm really happy to have our sponsor here today. Um, nothing we do happens without our sponsors. And today we have a first time sponsor, but a longtime friend of mine um, in Acronis. Uh, the focus is how to save time and money while delivering comprehensive managed security services profitably. We're fortunate to have Chief Channel Evangelist of Acronis with us today, um, Amy Luby. Good afternoon, Amy. Hey, Steve. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, being able to be here. So, um, yeah, I'm Amy. I have uh, been in the IT channel for about 26 years now. Um, a good portion of that, about 16 years of that, I was an MSP, um, bootstrapped that business. I'm, I'm from the Midwest, Omaha, Nebraska, uh, so grew that business regionally here uh, around 2006, pivoted into one of the first master MSPs in the channel. And then after building that business up and selling it, um, I have been consulting with or working for a number of cloud security vendors like Acronis over the last 10 years or so. Um, and my role has primarily been to help them establish or realign their, their MSP channel engagement strategies. So that's what I do, um, but not here to talk about me. I am here to talk about Acronis. So most people have heard of Acronis. We've been around for about almost 20 years. We are most well known for our backup and disaster recovery platforms. Um, about seven years ago, Acronis pivoted from just backup into a cyber protection company. Uh, why? Uh, the short answer is that cyber protection is more than just backup. Backup is only part of the solution. It's the reactive part of the solution. It's what you do after you've already lost data. Um, you go to your backup to restore it. Uh, with the state of cybersecurity today though, we all have to start being proactive in order to mitigate risk and protect data. Um, and, and that's really the core of the MSP model anyway, is proactive management. So ransomware attacks happen every 14 seconds. You can't even close your next ticket before another ransomware attack happens. Clearly endpoint protection alone is not enough anymore. Uh, we know that over 75% of organizations that do get ransomed are already running up-to-date endpoint protection. 
And the most expensive component of a cyber attack is data loss. It's almost 50% of the total cost to recover. And it translates to about almost $500 per endpoint on average, just to recover the lost data. In the next year or so, $6 trillion are expected to be spent globally on cyber protection. So the reality is that all organizations are shifting to make cyber protection the cornerstone of their approach. They're reprioritizing their budgets to align with today's digital threat landscape. So what does that mean to the MSP channel? Um, remote monitoring, backup, DR, uh, their reactive services, um, we need them. Um, they're well-established services from, from an MSP maturation model perspective, but they're commodities and small business owners aren't really paying, paying a premium anymore for these services. What SMB business owners truly value and what, should, what they're actually paying for is protection. Protection against the dreaded ransomware, they need compliance management, and they need security incident management. But the problem is um, cybersecurity has gotten quite complex lately. There's new threats all day, every day. Infrastructure is complex. There's multiple customers in multiple locations with multiple applications, processes, and needs. Um, humans have a notoriously low level of security training. Um, the attack surfaces are expanding and no longer is it adequate to really provide antivirus with a managed firewall and email filtering. But it's a heavy burden um, and it falls to the IT service provider um, who has to evaluate new cyber protection technologies, has to determine which ones are best in class, which ones are best for your client needs, once you pick them, you have to learn them, deploy them, configure them and manage them 24 seven. And then you have to fix all the issues when they do occur. But the bottom line is overall, you have to be confident that what you've put together actually protects clients from all threat vectors. It's a heavy burden. And ultimately you hope you've put together something that actually does prevent data loss, gives you the proper tools for rapid mitigation and goes well beyond antivirus and any malware. So most service providers uh, that I talk to are relying on a patchwork of legacy backup and security point products. It means six, seven or more different agents, management consoles and vendors that you have to manage. Um, not only do you have to train your engineers so that they're proficient in all your different point products, you spend tons of time deploying many agents on those desktops and endpoints when you're onboarding new clients and you're hoping that they're all compatible. All of your engineers have to know how each product works, where, each, where all the features and functionality are in inside each console. Um, you have to know how to escalate issues to each vendor for support when you need it. And all of these point products need to integrate with your PSA and RMM tools. It's expensive, it complicates your licensing, your deployments, your testing training, um, and it bogs down your service desk, poking around trying to find the right console to do something in. And in the end, you still have a complex stack of a sol solutions that aren't integrated or automated, um, and they're not helping you solve modern security problems today. So the core tenant, um, as I mentioned earlier, that MSPs build their client to relationships on is trust. If that trust is breached, it's difficult, if not impossible, to recover. So patching together a bunch of standalone technologies and agents bogs down your machines, makes management difficult, and traditional tools simply don't work against modern threats. So back to our security story. You know, Acronis, again, is most well known for its backup platform. Today, though, we have a comprehensive suite of security tools on top of our backup platform that we call CyberProtect. So now more than ever, cyber protection must be core to any MSP offering. You can't really solve any client issues before addressing their security posture. So CyberProtect gives you a full suite of protection tools under a single console, a single agent that are fully integrated and automated. So no longer do you have to string together disparate unintegrated point products to try to protect your client's data. You can eliminate that complexity and make security a center point of your offering. So purpose-built for MSPs, um, we incorporate specific features to give you peace of mind, knowing that you're fully protecting your clients in the best ways possible. You can give your clients easy remote access to their corporate networks. You score their devices so that you know which devices to focus on first, which are highest risk devices and which aren't. Identify insecure and unpatched applications, malware riddled backups and more. 
Uh, we actually even have a voice controlled UI that allows you to um, deploy devices without touching them or deploy security on those devices without touching them. Um, we have purpose-built protection plans for remote workers. We include security policy templates as well so that you can get your clients as productive as quickly as possible working from home. And we have specific protections for conference, conferencing apps like Zoom, WebEx, and Teams that prioritizes patching and protects them from vulnerabilities. And even within the console, we prioritize COVID-19 malware alerts. We have a security feed inside the console that you can use um, to watch and manage your clients. Um, and with our URL filtering, we even filter out the fake news uh, to protect your clients from that. So what does this look like? Um, one solution, you've got backup and disaster recovery, advanced malware protection, URL filtering, vulnerability scanning with integrated patching. And frankly, that feature set right there is what is driving most of our partners to adopt cyber protection. Uh, the ability to automatically patch after vuln scanning. Um, threat feed and security scoring I mentioned, remote monitoring and desktop control. And all of this is wrapped in a nice alerting and reporting engine. Again, managed from a single console with a single agent deployed. And folks, I have probably a minute to answer any, any questions. If there's anything um, that you've mentioned here, I'll take a quick look in the chat. I don't see anything specific. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move on. Okay, so um, we do protect uh, Microsoft 365 uh, as well as Google. Um, and we do have a, a, an, un, a free offer for you guys through uh, May 31st. Um, basically just signing up, um, get a free trial and all that. Um, we also have numerous resources for you to take advantage of. Ah, I am the worst at this. Okay, um, so complimentary resources. We have a ton of information for our partners. Um, you can find on our website. Um, one of my favorites is our cybersecurity assessment questionnaire. Uh, it's basically a tool that you can give your salespeople um, that allows them to go out and ask good questions uh, to your prospects and clients um, and gives them the right answers to look for um, to allow you guys to assess their security posture. It's, it's one of our most used tools, if you will. Um, and probably the other most used one is uh, Carl Polachek's uh, Fast Track to Better IT Ops and Help Desk Productivity. Um, it's a white paper that Carl wrote for us. So there we go. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. Um, off to you, Alan. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. Guys, I'm excited today. I am uh, going to be talking to you about something I'm exceedingly passionate about, and that is how to get your MSP ranked number one in Google. Um, and so I'm just going to dive right in. So I always want to know when I go to a session or a conference or whatever, I always want to know who's the dork up front talking because what do they know? Like what's their background? What's their history? Like why should I listen to them? Uh, maybe they don't understand the IT industry. Maybe they don't understand what it is that an MSP does. And so I always like to at least show here's who I am only so you can understand, okay, well, here's what Alan knows and here's his background. So maybe I'm going to take this with a grain of salt, or maybe I'm going to, you know, uh, filter what he says through this lens. So essentially I'm one of you guys, right? I am not a marketing person who went to school and then said, Hey, I'm going to get a job and sell marketing services to companies. Uh, that's not me. I'm an MSP. I'm a technology guy. I used to install servers. I used to work on, you know, windows.net if you remember back back in the good old days and uh, windows 95 and all those things so I, I actually have a technical background and i went over to the dark side and started really getting into marketing and the reason i got into marketing was i needed to drum up more business for my company i was starting to struggle the leads were drying up and i needed to make payroll and so i i went out and learn digital marketing, not as a, uh, you know, oh, well, let, me learn, let me learn this from my own uh, edification. I had to go out and learn it uh, so that it would actually help my company grow. So I'm one of you, I, I, I'm a fellow MSP, 
and I'm going to share with you my journey and things that I've learned and stuff that I have found that actually really work. So with that, we'll, we'll go right into it. So the first thing you have to do, if you want to rank number one in Google, you really need to understand Google. What is Google looking for? And if we, if we don't understand Google at a technical level, there's no way we can hope to rank number one because we don't have uh, the information we need. So here's a typical search, right? IT Consulting Chicago uh, is what I've got here. And as we scroll down, we, we start with the uh, paid links and then we have the local listings here. And then in the green section, we have the organic rankings. And as I scroll down to the bottom, we have some ads uh, at, at the bottom as well. So this is the first question I asked myself is how does Google decide who should rank first, organically speaking, right? So not the paid section, but how does Google decide who deserves spot number one? And this is actually the, the simplified formula, although this is the main aspect. This is the formula of what Google considers to figure out who it's going to put number one, number two, number three, and so forth. So authority, are you considered a trusted source? That's that's 45% of what it looks at. And the other 45% of what it looks at is relevance. Do you address the, the search being done? The other 10% is a bunch of tiny little factors that, that are kind of like um, um, uh, we, we, tiebreakers, right? So, so oh, if, if someone has the same authority and same relevance, what's the tiebreaker? But, but these are the two big ones. And so if you understand how authority and relevance play a part and how you actually can talk to these things on your website, you can actually influence Google to prefer your website over someone else's. So when we talk about becoming an authority, what we're really talking about is how can we be seen as important in the eyes of Google? And the way that we do that technically is we need backlinks, right? So a backlink is really just some other website that points to your website. So imagine if you were a Lenovo partner and Lenovo had a partner portal finder on its site and it said, hey, if you're in the Chicago area and you're looking for a, a registered Lenovo partner, you can check out ABC Corp. They're a good company. And then it has a link to your website. That's called a backlink, right? And so backlinks are the foundational element that Google looks at to say, are you important? If nobody points to your website, Google assumes that at least online, you're not really an important entity. So creating and gaining backlinks is, is, is very important. Um, and so then we say, well, okay, well, you know, I, I understand backlinks. I understand, okay, I need, I need people to point to me, maybe a vendor, maybe a client, maybe a nonprofit, maybe a, a, a university or college. Any number of organizations can point to me. But how do I become relevant in the eyes of Google, you know, according to their formula? And that's really content, right? So content on your website. And I'm going to be talking about content a lot in this presentation about what's really needed and what really impresses Google that that will get you to the top. OK, so keep this in mind. This is <clears throat> this is extremely noteworthy. You're dealing with authority and relevance. So some of you would say, you know, I, I hear people all the time. Well, Alan, I tried SEO before and it didn't work for me. All right. Now. To me, this is like saying, well, I tried exercising before and I didn't lose any weight. Oh, really? What did you do? I did four jumping jacks on Thursday and I didn't lose any weight. And, and so this is what I find is that many people that, quote, try SEO or do SEO, in fact, did not do it. They thought they were doing it. They were paying for it. They did activities that were that in the description line on the invoice said SEO, but they weren't actually doing anything that would have worked. They were just paying an invoice and said, hey, I, I tried SEO. So I really want to dive down into what, what is real SEO, because a lot of people have kind of come to the conclusion 
gosh, Alan, is, is SEO just a scam? Because I've, I've done it with three different companies and I've never got any leads. I've, it's never really worked for me. And here's the brutal truth, okay? For most people, SEO is probably sold as a scam. Now, I don't mean always intentionally, right? So I don't mean always that the company, you know, trying to do SEO is actively trying to harm you or, try, you know, take advantage of you. But it either falls into the, they don't know what they're doing or what's being done can't help. And so I really want to get into the nuts and bolts of really what can help uh, specifically. So I want to walk through the SEO process, right? So if you understand, well, Alan, what, what is real SEO? What are the actions that are actually taken? I can show you where the problem is and what I have found that actually works. So here's the SEO process. The first thing that's done is what we call keyword research, right? So you basically go to Google and you say, hey, Google, what do people type in your little box when they're looking for IT services? Right. So and, and Google will spit out a report that says, here are all of the IT related phrases that people are searching for. And when you get that list from Google, there's about four thousand total phrases. Right. And you say, well, good Lord, how, what makes up those four thousand phrases? Think of everything that you could do. You know, oh, I'm a Dell partner. Oh, I do server virtualization. I'm a managed services provider. I do outsourced IT. I do firewall management. I do security as a service, security networking, compliance. If you start bolting on every single IT phrase that could be uttered, that's where you get this 4,000 phrases. All right. Now, here's what happens. The first thing that that you need to know is there is no special research, right? That everyone has access to the same exact research because Google is the one that's providing it. So you get these 4,000 phrases and how would you sort this if you were a logical person? If you had a, if you had a group of phrases, uh, the, the phrase that people looked for and how often they were looking for it, most people would say, well, I would sort that by most searched to least searched, right? And that's exceedingly logical. And in fact, that's what everyone does, right? And this is what you get when you do that. At the top of the list, you get the short, catch-all, generic phrases that describe our entire company, right? Ooh, you're, you're IT support, or you're an IT company, or you're an IT consultant, or you provide IT services, right? So you, so you get these more frequently searched, but much more generic style phrases at the top. And as you scroll down the list, you get much more specific, granular, very technical, specific phrases, but fewer people are looking for those things. You know, VoIP solutions for small business or SharePoint development firm. And this is what people noticed. Wow, if I just focus on the, you know, the top 10 or 15 phrases, I can do just a little bit of work as far as optimizing my website and I get like half of all the traffic that's done, right? And, and a lot of people love this 80-20 rule. Hey, I, I can do just a little bit of effort and get uh, most or at least half of the results. And, and so this is kind of what everyone has done and so this is what SEO looks like for the most part, right? You are, you are taking the top phrases in any particular vertical market. So obviously with us, it's in the IT market. And you're focused on those top 10 or 15 phrases that are driving half of the traffic because it's a very doable thing, right? If you only have to create 10 or 15 pages of content, that's exceedingly doable. And if those 15 pages are, quote, the good ones, right, then you're getting in front of the most eyeballs. So this makes complete logical sense. In fact, this was, this was the best way to do SEO for a time. It worked. It was awesome. It was brilliant. But something happened and it broke this model. This is now a terrible way to do SEO today because it doesn't work. And honestly, this is what broke it, right? If everyone is doing that, 
then isn't there a problem with competition? Isn't there a problem with uh, only a certain number of spots? And that and that's exactly the case. In fact, here are the actual odds for winning the lottery. You got a one in 258 million shot of winning the mega millions. But what are the odds of ranking for particular IT phrases in the United States? Well, to rank for IT support Atlanta, you've got a one in 585 million shot, right? So double the terrible odds of winning the lottery. Or, or what about IT services Portland? You got a one in 307 million shot, right? IT consulting Chicago, one in 219. And even let's say that you're not in a major metro. Let's say that you're in Topeka, Kansas, or somewhere in the middle of Iowa. Even smaller cities are going to be in the millions. Now, they may not be in the hundreds of millions, but you know, you might be 18 million web pages that you're having to compete against. And essentially, what this means, the, and, and I, I love doing this because I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you that the, the stuff that no one dares tell you. Re typical SEO that's done today in 2021 does not work, has no shot of working. If you, if I was doing it for you, if someone else was doing it for you, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the, the company you hired or the person that you brought in to do it. The strategy doesn't work, right? It's, too competitive, to to an insane degree, right? Imagine how, how often would your favorite NFL team win the Super Bowl if there were 64 million teams, right? It That then becomes ludicrously impossible. All right, Alan, so this is great. Your presentation sucks. All you've done is bum us out. You've told us what doesn't work, what's terrible, what's a waste of money, what's a waste of time, what can't be done. So you, you're really bumming us out. All right, so now I'm gonna tell you what I found out. I'm gonna kind of give you the secret that I have discovered over the years. So let's go back to that list of 4,000 phrases, right? So we've asked Google, hey Google, what are people actually typing in the search box? We're gonna turn that list upside down, right? So we're gonna start with the non-often searched phrases, the what we call in the industry long tail, right? We'll, we'll get into this in a minute. If we start with these phrases, we call this long tail, what we discover is that the it has it has a ton of things going for us, right? There's low competition, right? There's not nearly as many people trying to fight over Microsoft Azure micro, uh, a migration consultant than are fighting for IT support, right? So the competition is low, meaning this is now a doable activity. You're not just wasting your time. This is achievable now. The focus is very high. Now think about it. Who, who searches for IT support, right? Yes, some of them will be companies looking to hire an IT support company. But you know who else types IT support Chicago? Somebody looking for a job. If I'm in the technology industry and I lost my job, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type IT support in the city that I live in or where I'm interested in working. I'm going to get a list of all the IT support companies or the managed service providers, and I'm going to send them my resume, right? So, so a, a, about a third of the people that type IT support are actually job lookers, right? You know who another huge block of people that might type IT support? marketing companies doing research. Hey, I hired a, I hired an IT company in Chicago. They're going to be my client. I'm now going to do keyword analysis. So I'm going to do all these search phrases, IT support Chicago to find out who's outranking them so I can do this stuff. My point is, even though there's more people looking for IT support than say Microsoft Azure Consulting, it not all of those greater numbers are actual potential clients. And that, so that's key. So there's a much more high degree of focus. Pretty much there's a 99% chance if someone's typing Microsoft Azure Migration Consultant Poughkeepsie, it's probably a company looking for an IT company to help them migrate to Azure, right? So it's almost entirely going to be a lead that you can land. 
it is much less expensive. You know, it is exceedingly expensive. If you say, hey, I want to go toe to toe with some of the big boys for IT support in my area, you might pay three, four, five, six thousand dollars a month for a chance to win. Right. And it's a low chance. But when you're when you're uh, looking at these long tail phrases, you're, you're going to win. If you know how to do SEO, you know how to optimize your site and you're, you're willing to create the content, you're going to win. And then the conversion rate is really high. Almost no one's actually going to contact you if they're looking for IT support as their search phrase because they're tire kickers. They're looking around that they may not even be a client. But if I need someone to help me migrate to, to AWS or if I need someone to help me do a, a network security vulnerability assessment, then that's what I need. I need that assessment. I need someone to do that. But in the spirit of being, uh, you know, 100% transparent, there is one huge problem with long tail, the, the long tail keyword strategy, right? And the, the problem it has is the volume, right? So most of you would say, hey, I'm really not that excited about the prospect of getting two additional web visits per per year, right? If I said, hey, uh, I've got this great marketing thing. It'll, it'll get you two web visits a year. Most people are like, yawn, boring. I don't, I don't care for that. That sounds terrible. That's the worst pitch I've ever heard, Alan. So, so long tail has a drawback. And this is kind of the thing that I've stumbled in. There is a solution to this drawback that now makes long tail a ridiculously awesome strategy. Okay. This is the key. Don't take a subset of the long tail phrases. All people that talk about long tail strategy, that's what they do. They, they avoid the top 10, which is smart because that's just throwing your money away. But they sacrifice it and say, OK, I'm going to pick these 10 instead of these 10. The problem with these 10 is there's not enough volume. So you will get a call or two a year but it's not going to really change your business. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to give you this nice flow of leads. The magic is focusing on every single phrase except those top 10. And by doing this, each one of these phrases might get you one or two leads a year. But when you add them all up, all 3,985 of these, now you're starting to get into a, a, a good amount of web visits that can really uh, turn into some leads. And in fact, this is what we notice. Well, gosh, if I focus on all of the long tail phrases, not just a subcomponent, I'm now also getting 50% of the traffic. And this 50% of the traffic is much better than this because this has a much higher conversion rate also the window of time. If I'm looking for a security vulnerability assessment, that's not a six month decision for me. I'm looking now because I need one done, right? I, I might call you in three days to have you do it. Uh, if I'm looking for an IT support company, I might be looking for 10 months from now, I might make a move, right? So there's a much more immediacy in these types of phrases. Now, what this means at its heart, if you understand this is, you are going to need tons and tons of pages on your website talking about all of these different things. Now, this is the key. This scares a ton of people, but I would submit to you, this is what makes this strategy even better, right? This is defendable. This is a strategy that if you do it and you do it the right way, it doesn't work for a year or two or six months. It can work for 30 years. I, I, there, there are people that I've worked with that have been ranked number one on Google for 12 years on stuff I did years and years ago. The point is you don't have to constantly be recycling money and dollars into this if you do it right. Now, I, I want to show you, right? So this is where a lot of people uh, skip this part. They don't want to show proof. I want to show proof. Right. And I'm actually going to start with Steve. Right. So, Steve, I didn't tell you about this, but I thought this would be cool. So I'm going to type MSP uh, peer groups. I think I did it that way. Yeah. So I work with Steve and, and here is his company ranked number two organically. This is not really a, a business. This is called a, a featured snippet. But 
But MSP Ignite here is number one organically in the world, right? You can do this search yourself. Um, now, I, I'm stripping out pay-per-click ads, so you might see some ads ahead of this, but here is MSP Ignite. But what if they didn't type MSP peer groups, right? What if they actually typed IT company peer groups, right, instead of MSP? Well, he, he's number one for that one, too. Or, or what if they typed something else? What if they typed, uh, I don't know, I don't think we use this term much anymore, but what if someone typed VAR peer groups, right? He, he's still number one for that one. Now, now let's take a typical MSP. Let me let me show you my code. So let me do Office 365 support NYC, right? Here's my company number one. But but what if they didn't type NYC? What if they actually typed Manhattan instead of NYC? Well, here here I am number one anyway, right? Or or what if they actually typed server virtualization consulting? I'm just gonna rattle this out real quick. Hit spell check. Uh, here we are, number one and number two. All right. Well, what if they type like network security auditing NYC as an example? And, and here we are, number one for that one as well. Now, I could go for days on this. All right? I, I've got about seven or eight hundred phrases in New York, Manhattan, uh, some some places in Connecticut where where we rank number one for just about anything you want to type. I, I wanted to show you that because this is something I never see people talk about is, hey, can you can you show me where you really uh, are, are ranking for this? Is this really doable? All right, so let me take you back now to my presentation. All right. So here's the very next thing I see people say, well, Alan, this sounds cool. It looks like you've, you've had success, you know, getting to the top of Google. It sounds like you really know kind of the secret of, of, of what needs to be done to get you there. But how can you know it's working as a marketing strategy? I hear tons of people all the time say, well, I'm, I'm investing in SEO or pay-per-click or digital LinkedIn or email marketing or whatever form of digital marketing it is. But I don't know if it's working. I mean, I just wait around and see if the phone rings. So is there a way we can know that this works beyond just ranking? But can we know that this is actually working to give us money, right? Because most of us don't want extra web visitors. What we want is suitcases of cash being handed to us by people. That's what we want. So there are digital tracking tools that exist. We have some here and then there are others as well. That, that can show you this working. So for example, Google Analytics. These are, uh, these are some MSPs that I've worked with and this is showing the traffic growth to, to pages specific to their Metro that, that were created for them. So you know, they created, we created, whatever, that shows the growth. So this is not just random website traffic. This is only website traffic where people are saying, hey, I'm looking for an Azure consultant in Denver, or I'm looking for a structured cabling company uh, in Golden, or I, you know, these kind of things where you can actually see, wow, these are real people that are contacting me that are growing. Uh, here's in Central Virginia, uh, uh, so, some web growth that they've shown. Uh, here's the DC metro area, uh, somebody that I've worked with. And here you can see, again, th and this is imperative, this is not overall website traffic. Anybody can show website traffic growth by just adding a blog. And most of you have probably done that. You have a blog, your reports are going through, through the roof, but nobody's calling you. I'll be the first to tell you, blogs will almost never get you any additional business. It'll get you additional web traffic, but the web traffic it will get you is people that will never buy from you. This is not what this is a measure of. This is a measure of actual service pages, not blogs, where you're saying, hey, we do this service in this city. All right. Same thing. Here's central Oklahoma. This works everywhere. I've, I've seen this work in, in other countries. But I wanted to see it because this is like verifiable proof that, hey, this really works. The next thing is we can actually see the identity of some of these visitors. Right. So you can actually log in and say, hey. Here is the company, the Interchurch Center came to my website. Here is how they found me, right? They did a search on Google looking for Microsoft Hyper-V, and that is how they found us. 
And here are the pages they looked at in order. Here are the contacts that work at that company. So now I know here's the company. Here are the people that work at that company. Here's their contact information. And they're looking for Microsoft Hyper-V services, right? So now I can contact that company or I can send them what I call the happy happy coincidence. Hey, I'm, let's, let's invite them to our next server virtualization webinar. Make sure we invite these guys. The next thing we do is we're, we're able to take screen recordings of every single one of these people that we're attracting. We can see what it is exactly that they're doing on our website. So here you'll see, this is what this looks like. So here's someone in New York. They were looking for Office 365 support. They found us from one of our ads back when we were running ads. We're not doing that anymore. Here's one that did that found us organically. But this is what this looks like, right? So this was actually a video of that inner church center that was looking for Hyper-V. This is them on our website. And so we have video, we can see what it is they're doing. We can find out is, is the website working properly? Uh, are people clicking on something that isn't supposed to be clicked on? Uh, did people actually watch the video? Did they actually download the white paper? Did they actually fill out the form? So you can watch every single thing that they do on your website as they're going throughout it. The next thing is we can capture emails, right? So you can say, hey, not only do I know that I'm generating uh, visitors to my site, but I'm capturing it when they are contacting me, right? So they're here, here they are, they're actually calling me or they're, they're emailing me, hey, I found you here. And this can tie back to say, hey, that, the, that page that we created on our website that was ranked number one on Google, this is the page this guy found. So this lead came from that page we did. Right, so there's that. And the last thing I wanna show you, because this is my huge proof slide for, for the proof section of this, is here are actual calls that we've generated from doing SEO. I talk to people all over the country and they say to me, I can't remember the last time where I got an unsolicited lead directly from my website. I get them from people that are referring people to me and I even get them from active marketing activities where I'm kind of beating the bushes and inviting people to a webinar. But I can't remember the last time I just got a lead because they found my website and wanted to do something. And I always tell them it's because you're not number one, right? If you're on page seven somewhere on Google, of course, no one's going to contact you. So just do me a favor and just listen to this just for a moment. I want you to listen to how specific and granular these calls are. They're, they're not tire kickers. They're people that have found someone online and they want to buy that service or, or they're interested in talking to someone about that specific solution. Hi, yes, I'm calling because I was, uh, found you guys on the internet and I was interested in speaking to somebody about IT support for our practice. We are looking to outsource our IT managed services and I uh, found you on the internet and wanted to talk to you about what plans you offer. Well, I just, uh, I don't know anything about your company. I found it while looking for computer services. And so I'm looking for a company that uh, that can help clean all this mess up wherever that ransomware was hiding and it popped back up, clean it all up, prevent okay. it from happening again and be our, our IT service going forward. I found you on the web, and and we're wanting if you to provide uh, consulting services or a hands-on repair of VMware systems. I found you guys on Google, um, and I have a project going on in Omaha that I could really use some help on, and it looks like you're pretty close to Omaha. Is there somebody I can talk to? I'm working with a company that has about 40-some locations. And they hired me to uh, come in and help them confirm their PCI compliance. Oh, okay. And um, I wanted to reach out to you guys as I just Googled, you know, PCI compliance consultant experts, and, and you guys came up in the top, you know, 10. What I'm looking for is remote access so that our doctor can take home her laptop and access our Cornerstone program from home. How did you uh, hear about? I just Googled it. <laughs> we are looking for a company, an uh, MSP company. I don't know if you provide those services. We do. And you are here in Miami? Yeah, we are here in Toronto. 
And may I ask how you got our information? I Google it. You Google? <laughs> okay, that's the best way, huh? So I, I just wanted you to hear that. I wanted you to see if you rank number one in Google for just about every possible conceivable IT related phrase that you can, you will absolutely get leads, right? That is the key. You can't, you can't dabble in SEO. You can't dip a toe in and say, Hey, I'll, I'll play around a little bit or do this, or Hey, I'll, I'll write a new page on managed IT that, that won't cut it. So, but, but the other form of doing it really works. And this is why, in order for someone else to outrank you, they also have to create all these pages on their website. All right, I got about six more minutes. I'm gonna walk you through how it is you do this. So the first thing you need to do, because no one's in the same place, you need to do an analysis to see where do you stack up against your primary competitors in your marketplace. Right. So remember this. This is something we're going to offer to you to do for free. But this is the first step, because some of you need to do all 10 steps. Some of you might be in a good place and say, hey, you, you can start on step seven. You, you've already done one through six. You may not have even known you did one through six, but you're already there. You, you can start at seven and, and do well. So that's the first thing you do. Right. The next thing you want to do is you want to define your service area. So think about wherever it is that you're an MSP. Right. You probably have one location, two locations. Some of you might have more than two locations, but you want to put a, a, a grid around where you service and look at all of the cities and towns in that area, not just the main. One. So, you know, as an example, if you were in Youngstown, that's probably where you're focused. But I would say, no, you want to focus on Youngstown and Warren and, and Sharpsville and Farrell and Hubbard and everywhere in your territory, you want pages that talk about those cities and the IT services that you offer in those cities. All right. The next thing you want to do is you want to define every service that you offer. So many people uh, make this mistake. Right. They they say, oh, well, I just do managed services and IT security. And I'm like, so do you do remote server monitoring? Well, well, yeah, we do that as part of that. OK, great. If someone's looking for that, they're never going to find you if you don't have a page about remote server monitoring. You know, do are you a Dell partner? Do you do Windows server installation? Do you deal with exchange hacks like like literally Every conceivable thing that you can offer as a company needs to have a page by the city, right? So you're going to have this matrix of here's all the things that I do and here's all the places that I do them in. And you need a page for every one of these intersections, right? So you need a wireless uh, you know, wireless site survey, Johnson City page and a Kingsport page and a Bristol page if, if you're in East Tennessee like me. If you're somewhere else, it's got to be your cities. You need to create pages for each one of these, right? Now, this, this is the magic piece. The reason this version of SEO works is we're not using trickeration. We're not doing anything uh, black hat or gray hat. We're not trying to trick the, the algorithm. We are simply saying, hey, we are willing to do more work than what my competitors are. And if I do that extra work, Google will reward me and they will probably reward me for eternity. Those pages that I was showing you earlier where I, where I ranked number one, I did those pages six years ago. I've never touched them since. They are literally six years old, frozen in time, and they're still ranking number one. I'm telling you now, they'll, they'll be number one 20 years from now. Because to outrank me, someone is going to have to create a website that has 75,000 pages on it to have as much relevance uh, as, as I do in the eyes of Google. So here, you know, here's my server virtualization Thomaston, Connecticut page, right? So I have I have a page just on virtualization in Thomaston, Connecticut. And then you have to optimize the pages you build. So you can't just throw a page together, right? You can't just say, hey, we do server virtualization in Thomaston, Connecticut. That, that's not enough. You have, to, you have to make the page long enough and you have to put in the key phrases that Google's looking for in the right places on the backside of the page. 
um, so that Google says, wow, he's he's really dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. This is a really fantastic page. I'm going to put him at the top. And then you want to use tracking tools to measure. You don't want to take anyone's word for it. All right. So I know I went a mile a minute. This is how I'm going to give you the, the value today, right? It, this is the hardest part of doing real SEO is you hear all these things. You're like, holy crap, where do I start? Like, what can I do? This is something that Steve is making available to you guys, right? Because you're part of MSP Ignite, we're going to do the first part for you for free, no strings attached, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a competitor analysis for your company comparing you against the three top competitors who you tell me you care about, right? So you're going to say, hey, Alan, it's me versus three, these three people. And this report's about 80 pages. But what's going to come out of this report is key metrics, right? We're going to get something that looks like this, competitor one, two, three versus you. And these numbers are very meaningful to me. And I will regurgitate to you in, in plain English what these numbers mean. Hey, you have a 4.77. Here's what this means. And here's how you can actually cash in on that fact. Oh, oh, you don't have a 4. You got a 0 0.37. Here's what that means for you. So what it means is you're going to get a realistic roadmap of what would SEO that actually works look like for your company. So the, the truth is, for some of you, SEO is going to look terrible because it's going to be very expensive with very low ROI until you get your numbers up, right? But I can tell you that before you do anything, so you at least know, wow, Alan told me exactly what I would expect. So we're, we're not even going to do SEO right now because it looks too ugly. Some of you might look like this, where it's like, gosh, man, you could take over the Eastern Seaboard tomorrow. You just need to do one more thing and you could crush it. All right. If you want this report, these are showing this thing. If you want this free report, go to this uh, URL and you can request it. I'm personally going to do the report for you. And I'm also going to personally go over it with you. So this is not some automated freebie hack junky thing. I'm legit going to walk through for an hour and say, here is what this report is telling me. And if this were my company, here's what I would do in this order then you can do whatever you want to, right? There, there, there's no, uh, there's no uh, anything that you have to do. It's good information to have because then you can take that and you say, gosh, now we have a roadmap of what our digital marketing should be. And even if we do it a year or two from now, we have some good data on what, uh, what it is we should really do. So with that, I might have a minute or two. Steve, you can tell me exactly how much. Is there any questions? I'm happy to answer anything. Alan, we've got like three or four minutes and there are a couple of questions. By the way, you said you would do this in plain English and I think you mean Tennessee English, let's be fair. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, because we've talked enough that I know there's a difference. By the way, the first question that went up to you, but you didn't see it. I only sent it to the panelists. You used MSP Ignite as an example. And I just want to point out that we were number two in the first example, not number one. So I, I'm a little concerned. That's yes. you. No, no, that's fine. You, you were the first company, number one. You were the second link. Uh, someone else had gotten what's called a featured snippet. So uh, I'll, I'll have to talk to you work and on, see how we can work on that, better on that. <laughs> work on that, will you? Yep. Um, listen, my friend Nathan, he, he, he had this question and he asked it twice to make sure because he realized he didn't put it in the Q&A. Yep. Um, you talked early on, you talked about how you can go see what phrases people are looking for in Google. And he wanted to know if you could show where that is, where, how do you go find that? Yep. So it's, it's not a single button kind of thing. Like, Hey, show me the thing, but where you find it is in Google ads, there's a feature called keyword planner. And that tool will allow you to query Google's database on IT related phrases. So you basically put in one phrase and it says, hey, here's a bunch of other phrases people also type in when they're looking for this thing. So you need to string several of those together to, to end up with your list, but that's exactly how to do it. And it doesn't cost any money to do that. Fan fantastic. Um, I also wanna point out to you that at 2.39 Eastern, so about 16 minutes, 18 minutes ago, um, 
Robert Wagner posted, I already believe this is a suitcase of cash, case closed. So I think that's a testimonial for your presentation anyway, um, which was pretty nice. Awesome. <laughs> Thank um, you. I've got another, another one here, and we might have time for two or three more folks. So if you want to post them, go ahead. Would you recommend creating a page layout template for creating these pages? And, and what should pages absolutely have to utilize the keywords? Yeah, you should do a template just for the sake of management to make the page creation easier. And uh, the key elements to have on the page is you want to have, uh, you have, you need to have enough content, right? 500 to 1200 words. So it can't be five sentences and you're done. You need to have enough content. And you need to have the, the content be very narrowly focused on that exact topic, right? So if you're, if you're doing a page on Azure, don't talk about cloud computing and uh, hosting in the cloud. Don't talk about all these other things because you need to talk about all those other things on their own page. So you don't want cross-contamination. And then the last thing is you want to make sure that you're tying in the search phrase into that page. So, so you're going to be sure that when someone's actually looking for a company like you that has those services, that Google is finding that phrase and it's triggering you and putting you to the top of Google. Cool. So should each page per service per location be unique other than changing the location name? So, so it's interesting. They, they need to be unique-ish, right? So here's what that means. They don't have to be wholly new, different pages. But you also probably don't just want to change the city name only, right? But they can be more similar than they are dissimilar. Like mentioning this city name a few times within the content. Yeah, and maybe even, you know, maybe tweak a sentence in, in the thing that's a slightly yep. different. But yeah, you don't have to... You don't have to be like, oh my gosh, I have to rewrite this page 30 times. No, you can you can have one base page and then just slightly modify that base page. Um, I'll also tell you, Alan, we haven't spoken about this, but since we put the chat on our website, we get we get a response from the people that man the chat service. I'd say we average one a week, a lead a week from that. Yes. Um, I've got some great stats, but I, I'm, I am telling you in stone as a fellow MSP, right? Not, not as a marketing guy, as a fellow MSP, this absolutely flat works. It's worked in Ireland and Canada and Australia and 46 of the 50 states, Denmark. Like I've done this all over the world and it works everywhere. It, it, is, it is ridiculous because it's not a trick. We're, we're really taking advantage of human laziness and what, like, like let me just tell you that. I know, I know, I know I got to stop, but let me just tell you this real quick. When I started at the company that I'm at now, which is smack in the middle of Manhattan, they were a 17 employee company, right? So we don't deserve to be number one in Google in all of New York from an, from a business standpoint, we're not the big 800 pound gorilla in New York. In fact, we're a tiny nobody in New York, just being honest with you guys. But we rank number one because Google thinks and has said, gosh, you're the 800 pound gorilla digitally. And it's because I'm doing things that no one else is doing. But so we look like that. And all of you can do that. You can, you can be the 800 pound gorilla digitally in your market. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank everyone for their time today. We certainly hope the information you received was actionable and helpful. Uh, for those not already participating in MSP Ignite, feel free to uh, visit our website or shoot me an email. The information is right here in front of you. Um, as far as that goes, happy to talk to you about our money back guarantee. Uh, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Alan, for your time and expertise as always. And uh, reach out to us or to either of our presenters if you have further information or further questions, folks. Thanks again, take care.